Welcome. NSG 321, Study Section 3, Women Empowerment. Introduction. This study section discusses the concept of women empowerment, levels as well as benefits of women empowerment will be explored too. Finally, barriers of women empowerment will be examined. Learning outcomes. When you have studied this section, you should be able to define term women empowerment, explain levels of empowerment, Discuss benefits of women empowerment. Explain barriers to women empowerment. One, women empowerment. I want to believe this is not the first time you will be hearing women empowerment. However, for us to explain what this concept means, let us first describe what we mean by empowerment. Empowerment is a word used to refer to the act of strengthening the political, social, economics, emotional, and educational aspects of an individual. To help them in combating the problem around him or her, as such as women empowerment deals we strengthen the rights of women in nation. It is not about lack of power. There is power, but the ability to exercise the power is lacking. Despite many international agreements affirming human rights, women are still much more likely to be poorer and more illiterate than the men. They usually have less access than men to medical care, property ownership, credit training, and employment. The ability of women to control their own fertility is absolutely fundamental to women empowerment and equality. When a woman can plan a family, she can plan the rest of her life. When she is healthy, she can be more productive. And when her reproductive rights, including right to decide the number, timing, spacing of her children, and ability to make decisions regarding reproduction free of discrimination, coercion and violence are promoted and protected. She has freedom to participate more fully and equally in the society. This freedom of a woman will lead us to a discussion on what we refer to as gender equality. Understanding gender equality. Gender equality implies a society in which women and men enjoy the same opportunity, outcomes, rights, and obligations in all spheres of life. Equality between men and women exists when both sexes are able to share equally in the distribution of power and influence, have equal opportunity for financial independence through work or through setting up business enjoy equal access to education and opportunity to develop personal ambition, a critical aspect of promoting gender equality is the empowerment of women with a focus on identifying and redressing power imbalances and giving women more autonomy to manage their own lives. However, we should ask ourselves, on what platform can women empowerment be achieved this will be our focus in the next section, Platform for Women Empowerment. To achieve equality, the platform for action emphasizes the need for women to work together and in partnership with men toward the common goal of gender equity worldwide. Although, the Bendig Declaration and Platform for Action is a standalone document. It builds upon consensus and progress made at earlier United Nations conferences summits, particularly the Conference on Women in Nairobi in 1985, which developed 
the Nairobi forward in looking for strategies for the advancement of women. The Benjig platform focuses on 12 critical areas of concern that must be addressed to gender equality and women empowerment, 10 of which are highlighted below. 1. Women and poverty. 2. Education and training of women. 3. Women and health. 4. Violence against women. 5. Women and armed conflict. 6. Women and the economy. 7. Women in power and decision making. 8. Institutional mechanism for the advancement of women. 9. Human rights of women. 10. Women and the media. Dimensions of empowerment. Reproductive health. Women are more vulnerable than men to reproductive health problems. These problems include maternal mortality and morbidity, failure to provide information and services to help women protect their reproductive health, contribute a gender-based discrimination, and a violation of women's rights. Economic aspects. More women live in poverty than men. This is due to the fact that women are not allowed to go out and fend for themselves, or they are not paid properly for the services they render. Women should be paid in their workplace and not being discriminated in the economic sphere. Educational aspects. About two-thirds of the illiterate adults in the world are women. Higher women education is associated with both, however, infant mortality and lower fertility as well as higher opportunity for the education of their children. Political aspects. Social and legal institutions still do not guarantee women equality in human rights, that is, right to vote and to be voted for. Women are rarely found in the high places of authority where decisions are made regarding the constitution of the country. Therefore, they are exposed to so many violent attacks and oppression. There should be laws against domestic violence of women. They should be allowed to take actions when cases are brought up. Stewardship of national resources. There should be provision of security, water, food, father that oversee the family's health and diet because women tend to put up immediate practice whenever they learn about nutrition and preserving the environment and material resources. In all, there are some principles guiding women empowerment. Let us look at a few of them. Principles of women empowerment. According to the United Nations, the principles of women empowerment are as follows. Establish high level of corporate leadership for gender equality. Principle 1. Leadership promotes gender equality. Affirm high level support and direct top level policy for gender equality and human rights. Establish company-wide goals and targets for gender equality and include progress as a factor in managers' performance review. Engage internal and external shareholders in the development of company policies program and implementation plans that advances equality. Treat all women and men fairly at work. Respect and support human rights and non-discrimination. Principle 2. Inclusion and non-discrimination. Pay equal remuneration, including benefit, for work of equal values and strive to pay a living wages to all women and men. Ensure that workplace policies and practice are free from gender-based discrimination. Offer flexible work options. Leave and re-entry opportunities to positions of equal pay and status. Ensure the health, safety, and well-being of all women and men workers. Principle 3. Health, safety, and freedom from violence, taking into account differential impact on women and men. Provide safe working conditions and protection from exposure to hazardous material and discloses potential risk. 
strive to offer health insurance or other needed services, including for survivors of domestic violence and ensure equal access for all employees. Train security staff and managers to recognize signs of violence against trafficking, labor, and sex exploitation. Promote education, training, and professional development for women, principle four. Education and training. Ensure equal access to all company supported education and training program, including literacy, vocational classes, and information technology. Provide equal opportunity for formal and informed networking. Offer opportunity to promote the business case for women empowerment and positive impact of inclusion for men as well as women. Implement enterprises development, supply chain and marketing practice that empower women. Principle 5. Enterprises, development supply chain, and marketing practices. Expand business relationship with women-owned enterprises, including a small business and women entrepreneurs. Support gender-sensitive solutions to credit and lending bonus. Respect the dignity of women in all marketing and other company materials. Promote equality through community initiation and advocacy. Principle 6. Community leadership and engagement. Lead by example. Showcase company commitment to gender equality and women empowerment. Use philanthropy and grant program to support company commitment to inclusion, equality and human rights. Measure and publicly report progress to achieve gender equality. Principle 7. Transparency, measuring and reporting, incorporate gender markers into ongoing reporting obligations. Make public the company policies and implementation plan to promote gender equality. Establish benchmark that facilitate inclusion of women to all levels. Let us know that there are three levels in which an empowerment may occur. The following section will discuss these three stages. Two, levels of empowerment. Generally, empowerment occurs at three levels. The individual level, this deals with the individual woman's ability to take control over their lives, their perception, about their own value and abilities to identify a goal and work towards this goal. The group level. It deals with the collective action and sense of agency that women experience together. The society level. This deals with the permissiveness of the political and social climate, the societal norms and the public discourse, on what is possible and impossible for women to do and how women should behave. We have been talking about women empowerment from the beginning of this study section. Does this empowerment benefit women at all? The next session answers the question. Three, benefits of women empowerment. There are a lot of benefits in women empowerment programs. Some of these benefits are discussed below. Economic. When women are empowered to do more, there is possibility of economic growth and reduction in global poverty since women represent most of the world's poor population. A study found that of a Fortune 500 companies, those with more women board direction had significantly higher financial returns and increased economic output of the nation. Political. When women are informed in decision making, their decisions are more family friendly. This is due to their human nature. Big Margaret Thatcher of the United Kingdom and Dora Akin Louis of Nigeria, who brought about a radical change in the fight against fake drugs, are women who are involved in politics. Educational benefits. Women and mother are usually the first teacher that a child encounters at home. 
when women are educated, same is passed or imparted onto the children. More so, statistics have shown that women are first lead that are now moving to the forefront of many disciplines. Medicine, nursing, engineering, ETC, reproductive health. This will help women make informed decisions on issues like family planning and child spacing. This will also reduce the rate of maternal and child mortality and morbidity. Entrepreneurship. This will help women create jobs and reduce the harming of unemployed youth in the society. This helps women to become decision makers since decisions are needed in the management of the business. The family. As postulated by Staples 1989, that in 15 years' time, the family will be a dual wage earner. This is a situation whereby the woman is also involved in fending for the family. This has gone a long way to help the family financially, even though the government, corporate bodies, religious organizations, NGOs, and individuals are all trying to promote women empowerment. There still exist some barriers. The next session discusses some of these barriers. Four, barriers to women empowerment. Many of the barriers to women empowerment and equity lie ingrained in cultural norms. Many women feel these pressures, while others have become accustomed to being treated inferior to men. Even if men legislated NGOs, ETC, are aware of the benefits women empowerment and participation can have. Many are scared of disrupting the status quo and continue to let societal norms to get in the way of development. Research shows that the increasing access to the internet can also result in an increased exploitation of women. Types of victimization include cyber stalking harassment, online pornography, Six, build upon the strength and capacities of citizens and avoid a focus on deficit. This is critical for building self-esteem, which is both an outcome and part of the empowerment process. Seven, participation in community life at three levels is critical for the empowerment of individuals. Working on issues which affect their own lives, connecting with others who have similar experiences, and being involved in a range of community group activities. Eight, encourage and support citizens 
to make ongoing contribution to their communities through access to valued social roles such as employee, volunteer, mentor, advocate, or friend. Nine, citizens who are consumers of services should have control over the resources and personal support they need to live with big. Ten, it is possible to learn important strategies about prevention from studying the process of empowerment. For example, as people become more empowered, they rely less on formal service system and more on the informal service network. These learnings can be used as important principle for proactively empowering potentially vulnerable individuals and groups. The empowerment of women has become one of the most important concerns of the 21st century, not only at national level, but also at international level. Efforts by the government are on to ensure gender equality. But government initiative alone will not be able to achieve this goal. Society must take initiative to create a climate in which there is no gender discrimination and women have full opportunity of self-decision making and participating in social, political and economic life of the country with a sense of equality. Finally, to empower the female sound as though we are dismissing or ignoring males. But the truth is, both gender desperately need to be equally empowered. When you educate a boy, you educate an individual, but when you educate a girl, you educate a nation. Education is a human right and an essential tool for achieving the goal of equality development and peace. Study section summary. This study section discussed the concept of women empowerment. Levels as well as benefits of women empowerment will be explored too. Finally, barriers of women empowerment were examined. Now we've come to the end of study section three. Thanks for listening.